Hi, I'm Dhanpal. I manage India's largest climate investing fund at Eversource Capital. I would like to thank the Sustainability Mafia for inviting me to speak at this event. Did you know that the last decade was the hottest in 125,000 years? Climate change is a reality and the earth is getting warmer every day. Climate risk has overtaken COVID-19 pandemic as the number one risk in the world. India is already the third largest emitter of carbon after the US and China. Deloitte estimates India risks losing $35 million in economic potential over the next 50 years if we don't do anything about climate change. As our economy grows, and as other countries control their emissions towards net zero by 2050, India's emissions will actually increase both absolutely and relatively. India is likely to become the biggest net incremental emitter of CO2 over the next decade. Energy demand taken by electricity in India's building sector alone rises from a quarter today to about half by 2040. Oil demand for road transport is projected to double by 2040. Investing in climate change now is the imperative for the world and for India. In the next decade, India will need to invest anywhere between two and a half to three trillion dollars to finance this change. The latest estimates that we have suggest that we are investing less than 10% of this annual requirement of over $170 billion. This all sounds pretty daunting, but let me point to three pieces of good news. First, the government of India has been ambitious and impactful in developing a response to climate change. We can and we must do more, but an impressive start has been made since the National Action Plan on Climate Change was launched in 2008. Second, there are deep pools of international capital available to support India's investment needs. I hope a lot more will be committed in Glasgow this coming month, but there is no shortage of patient green capital. Third, we are at an inflection point where climate investing is good economics. Rapidly scalable business models and innovative technologies are disrupting the entire decarbonization value chain and creative massive opportunities for investment. India has a deep pool of businesses as well as extraordinary entrepreneurs that hold the key to the transition to a sustainable net neutral economy. As of June 2021, there were over 50,000 startups in India registered with DPIIT's Startup India. Of these, nearly 16,000 recognized in FY21 alone. An increasing part of the startup ecosystem is addressing areas related to energy transition, e-mobility, energy efficiency, as well as resource efficiency around waste and water. These startups reflect the accelerating demand for early and late stage capital as more and more of them progress through the funnel and reach different levels of maturity and success. Let me expand on these a bit. First, the role of government. India has been one of the biggest champions of climate action. A few examples stand out. The government of India initiated the setup of the International Solar Alliance of 124 nations. India's national solar mission has propelled the country into becoming one of the leaders in solar energy with a path towards 450 gigawatts by 2030. We are already a quarter of the way there with about 100 gigawatts already having been installed. The FAME 2 scheme introduced in 2019 has set out a bold path forward 
towards electrification of the Indian transportation system with approximately a million two-wheelers and 500,000 three-wheelers to be on the roads by next year itself. The government's biofuel policy has set out an ambitious plan to achieve at least 20% green fuel oil by 2030. While the role of government can that be that of a catalyst, we really, really need to unleash the entrepreneurial energy in India, given that multiple areas are ripe for disruption. Let me give three examples towards this. One, renewable power is already the lowest cost of power. However, we need to be able to disrupt renewable energy at the grassroots level, especially if you look at solar rooftops. The real change is happening today for established corporate customers. However, everyone is paying significantly higher costs, which can be halved by making rooftop solar available at an efficient level. Backup power generation today, installed base in India is over 90 gigawatts. These are all being fueled by diesel. These can be replaced with renewable power sources combining battery storage. If you look at the second area on our electric vehicles, today EVs contribute less than 1% of the total vehicle sales in the country. If we are to target at least 30% by the end of this decade, there is an investment over $200 billion in the EV ecosystem, charging infrastructure, batteries, etc. With rising diesel and petrol prices, EV economics have become even more attractive with significant savings available in daily usage. On the other hand, battery prices have come down by as much as 90% over the last decade and today continue to tip the scales in favor of electric vehicles. For all of this potential demand of capital, I think there are key three drivers which I believe are there for entrepreneurs, businesses and corporates to leverage it. The first is new and emerging business models that have become much more competitive and disrupting the way energy is being produced, how mobility works and how industries process their products. There is a clear opportunity to leapfrog carbon intensive technologies just the way mobile telephony leapfrog the wireline or the fixed line networks in the telecom infrastructure of India. Two, there is an increasing momentum of large Indian companies scaling up renewable capacity, greening their entire footprint to deliver net zero targets. Three, new and growing set of consumers today, especially the millennial consumers who are particular about their carbon footprint and want to make sustainable, conscious choices in terms of goods and services that they consume. Finally, I believe that all of these good opportunities, capital typically chases them. And we have to lead with these and many more interesting opportunities available for climate change in India and capital then follows to deliver upon them. There is therefore a need to balance and therefore there is a need to innovate in equity, debt and blended finance to address this over two and a half trillion dollar climate finance conundrum. First, the role of equity. Institution investors globally are already rebalancing their portfolios to increase allocation to ESG and sustainability. Globally, ESG assets have already climbed to over $37 trillion from $22 trillion in 2016 and are likely to become a third of total global AUM close to 50 plus trillion dollars by 2025. Millennial consumers as well as innovations in fund products is driving this growth. Equity funds are dominating this whole switch to ESG and climate finance within that is almost like the king accounting for 25% of total ESG funds launched just last year in 2020. One such example is what we at Eversource Capital are doing to deliver climate finance to India with a focus on impact. 
we developed a very unique investment strategy to invest in platforms across the energy transition value chain as well as in resource efficiency. We have already built platforms and these are very scaled, innovative platforms in renewable energy at the utility level, at the corporate and industrial level, in electric mobility, e-mass business models, in environmental services around waste, water, and also exploring areas such as debt financing and energy efficiency. <coughs> Investing capital at scale, incubating and building businesses in a very rapid and agile manner. We raise this fund with the support of and backing of the Sovereign Fund of India, NIIF, as well as the UK's FCDO. Later on, we brought in the Green Climate Fund, which provided over $137 million of very attractive concessional capital, which allowed us to create a huge and attractive high quality pool of capital, both from corporate as well as international financial investors. Second, the role of debt. Even if we were to look at financing from the multilateral development banks being all devoted just to carbonize, decarbonization and resilience, it would still meet less than 4% of the finance needs for full climate transformation. While there is a lot of climate finance attention mainly to project finance related to clean infrastructure, there is a need to deepen and broaden the debt as well as the bond markets to make available long-term patient capital for green and sustainable industries. India already has the second largest green bond market amongst developing countries, but a huge amount of work needs to be done to increase the overall velocity in that market. Key amongst that is to drive two basically agendas, increase the tenure of capital available and two, the total amount of capital available to the green market. Carbon markets, the third point, really need to be developed to create an efficient, cost-effective and flexible way to manage the unpriced cost of carbon. Europe has already led the way, for example, putting a carbon tax on every ton of steel sold into the EU. Steel companies are therefore being encouraged to go green in order to reduce their carbon footprint. Four, the role of blended finance. While the risk return profile is already changing in many sectors, green finance continues to be more expensive. Green projects often have high upfront costs with benefits available over a very long tenure. The higher risk perception and government governance issues, a lack of a universal green definition and concerns of green washing create investor hesitancy. Concessional capital can play a critical role in making the proposition much more attractive to improve the economics of green initiatives. 10 to 20% infusion of concessional lending can help reduce the overall finance cost and improve returns and viability. A small example is PSL lending for small renewable projects, which is a step in the right direction. Such concessional pools of capital need to be made available across critical sectors that are currently facing a gap in viability during high cost or limited availability of financing. To conclude, there are two great trends that are reshaping our lives. The economy and the financial services industry are the absolute imperative to respond to the realities of climate change and the extraordinary advances in digital technologies. Addressing this need of two and a half trillion dollars of investment to enable India's achievement is just a beginning of our journey. In future, all finance will be green, just as all finance will be digitally enabled. Providers of both debt and equity capital need to reorient their thinking as to what they finance, to focus on green asset classes and technologies, but also how they approach the market using digital to reach customers, assess risk and administer relationships. We have taken the first few steps towards this digitally green future. Everyone needs to join this call of action to make the world 
a better place for our next generation. Thank you.